Hello there. My name is Calliope. I'm going to be taking care of your head-to-toe assessment today. Would you mind just confirming your name and date of birth for me? Excellent. Give me just a moment. Wonderful. And is that your preferred name, and how do you like to be addressed? Perfect. So, this head-to-toe examination is going to be taking a comprehensive look at your health, and we are going to start all the way at the head, as described, and end at the toes. Now, did you have any questions for me before we begin? No? Okay. I will be telling you what I'm doing the entire time, so you're not lost, and feel free to ask me any questions during the examination, all right? Okay, so for this examination, I am going to need to be touching you. Is that okay with you? Do I have your consent to do that? So I'm going to sanitize my hands real quick, and then we will begin. Excellent. As much as it's required to sanitize before we begin, I think it's a beautiful way to start off an examination anyway just makes it feel just so much more fresh, doesn't it? Yes. Could be because of the cucumber melon scent of my sanitizer. Now I'm going to ask you a few questions, and I just want you to answer me as best as you can. Firstly, where are we? As specific as you can be. Excellent. And what are we doing today? Yes. Head to toe assessment. And what is the date today? Good. And the approximate time. If you can't remember the time, the time of your appointment will suffice. Wonderful. So, you are oriented to time, place, and person. Now we're going to be taking a little look at your head. Now when we're looking at the head, I am going to be just palpating around the head and the face. And just while I'm looking at you right here, Checking your symmetry, checking the proportions, looking at the pallor of your skin, your lips, your eyes, looking at the quality of your hair and your skin. And then when I start the scalp examination, I like to start right here, right here at the hairline. So I'm going to come in here and just look through the hairline here. Do let me know if anything is uncomfortable or painful. And we're looking for signs of infections wounds, any maladies of the scalp, infestations, lesions, that sort of thing. 
neighborhood in the park here. I'm getting a little bit up close and personal. <laughs> Good. Okay. While I'm back here, I'm just going to be feeling the occipital nodes right at the back hairline. Rolling my fingers around there, see if there's any distension. Okay. And the contours of the skull are in the right place, ridges where there should be, valleys where there should be. Good. Okay, and then while I'm coming forward here, I'm just going to be feeling the post-auricular nodes right behind the ear as well as the pre-auricular nodes right in front of the ear. Jugulotigastric right in this area. Good. Parotid glands. Okay. Let's take a look at the skin here, and then we'll get into the submandibular submandibular nodes. Okay. Have you had any concerns with your skin as of late? There's a little bit of redness here. Do you deal with any rosacea at all? I see. Good. Let me take a look at your eyes. Yeah. The sclera is clear and the pupils have been pretty responsive so far, but we'll take a look at those a little more in depth later. Okay. Right. Skin around the nose looks good. And lips have good color to them. Do you mind just opening your mouth real quick? I want to check the corners. Okay, good. You can go ahead and close your mouth. Anything else? Looks pretty good. Now let's take a look at the lymph nodes underneath the jaw. I'm just going to be doing kind of a rolling motion here. We have the submental right here and then the submandibular. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a little peek at your eyes. Now, I have a light here. It is a little on the strong side. I'm just going to be taking a little look at the eyes real quick. Okay. So, I am going to be pulling up the eyelid here, and I want you to look down for me. Okay, pull up, look down. Good, and now I'm going to pull down and I want you to look up. Pull down, look up. Good. And the other side here, I'm going to pull up. I want you to look down for me. Pull up, look down. Good, and now I'm going to be pulling down and I want you to look up. Color looks good on the conjunctiva. All right. So now I'm just going to have you look at my nose here, right? And I'm going to do what's known as a swinging light test. 
where we go to one eye, shine the light into the eye, and swing it back and forth, looking for a specific defect. Now we are going to be doing the direct consensual response test. What I'm going to be doing is I will be shining the light into this eye first, and I'm going to have my hand dividing your eyes here. I'm going to shine it into this eye first, and your eye should react to the light when it is shined into your eye. And that would be the direct response. Now. When I shine this light into this eye, and this eye reacts, at the same time, in the same way, your other eye should react, even though there's a barrier between them, even though the light's not getting through. And that's the consensual response. Your eyes should be working together in the same way, at the same time. Okay? Alright, so let me turn this on. And put my hand up between your eyes. And we are going to look at the direct, direct, direct response, good, consensual, consensual, consensual response, excellent. And yeah, let's look to the other side, direct. Direct, direct, good, consensual, 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 very good. Now, I'm going to have you follow the light for me, alright? So, I'm going to hold this up and I want you to do your best to follow the movement of this light using only your eyes, without moving your head. Okay? You do that for me? I'm going to sit back a little so we have some room to work with. I want you to follow this light. Good. Just follow the light, using only your eyes, without moving your head. Just keep following the light. Keep following the light. Good. Let's go up and down. Up. And down. Excellent. Let's go diagonally up. Diagonally down. Diagonally down. Diagonally up. Good. Diagonally up. Diagonally down. Diagonally down. And if you could just look at the curtain behind me here, pick a spot here, good, and then look at this light, okay? And follow the light using only your eyes, without moving your head as I come in and out. In. And out. In. And out. Good. If you could look at the door behind me. Good. And then look at this light as we go. In. And out. In. And out. In. And out. Good. 
Okay. You can go ahead and blink. Do what you need to give your eyes a little refresher. So I want to take a little detour real quick before we look at your ears. I'm going to test cranial nerve number seven real quick for your facial movement. So I'd like you to firstly raise your eyebrows for me. Raise your eyebrows. Good. Close your eyes real tight. Good. And can you puff out your cheeks? Good. And can you smile real wide with your teeth? Good, and frown. <laughs> okay, good. And then we are going to check your facial sensation. I'm going to use my little hidden compartment here in my reflex hammer. I've got a little friend. So, we are going to be doing the soft, sharp sensation test. We have the soft portion, which is this little brush here. And we have the sharp, which is this dull metal tip. Even though we call it sharp, it's more just like a concentrated point of contact, okay? So, I'm going to test this on your jaw real quick so you know what each feels like, okay? So this is the soft. Soft, soft, soft. Good, and this is the sharp. Sharp, sharp, sharp. Just like that, okay? I'll be testing the three branches of your trigeminal nerve on each side of your face. The ophthalmic, the maxillary, and the mandibular. So if you could just close your eyes for me and let me know whether you feel a soft touch or a sharp touch, okay? Good. Soft. Soft. Sharp. Soft. Sharp. Sharp. Good. Sharp. Soft. Soft. Sharp. Soft. Soft. Very good. You can go ahead and open your eyes. Now I want to feel your temporalis and masseter muscles, as well as the TMJ joint. So I'm going to be feeling all around your jaw, the bulk of the muscle here, as well as the temporalis muscle up in here, okay? So it might feel like a bit of an odd massage here. I want to palpate these first, and then I'm going to have you do some jaw clenching. Okay. Right. If you could clench your jaw for me. Unclench. Clench. Unclench. Good. If you could open your jaw. And close. Open. Close. Good. And now with the master muscle here. If you could clench your jaw. Unclench. 
clench unclench you could open your jaw close your jaw open close good I'm gonna test your jaw strength a bit so firstly I'm gonna have you have your jaw closed and I'm going to try to keep it closed I want you to push against me and open your jaw so you have it closed and I'm pushing up and I want you to open it anyway okay right so you could open your jaw against my resistance good and if you could open your jaw and I'm gonna try to push it up I want you to resist me okay open jaw and I'm gonna try to push okay good you can go ahead and close your jaw again now lastly I'm going to test your sinuses real quick see if there's any pain or tenderness before we move on to your ears now I'm going to press along the frontal sinuses first do let me know if there's any pain or discomfort okay and I'm gonna press along the sinuses along the nose and the maxillary sinuses here any pain or tenderness okay and I'm just going to drum my fingers along these areas and let me know if there's any pain or tenderness just drum 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 drumming tap 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 tapping drum 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 drumming drum 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 drumming good okay and any pain or tenderness with that no all right let's take a look at your ears then so I'm going to take a visual inspection of the outer ear firstly before we get into it with the otoscope okay let me check this ear first all right so let me let me have a look here okay so outer ear it's good coloring not seeing any redness, opening of the ear canal doesn't have any signs of redness or discharge do you have any problems with your hearing or any ear pain, fullness, itching? no, okay alright, let's take a look at the back of the ear so I'm just going to flip your ear over so that I can take a look back here okay and nothing out of the ordinary back here let's put your ear back there let's look on the other side so looking at the color of the ear good any signs of infection any signs of any problem and then we're just going to pull back the ear that i can look behind the ear Good. Okay, very good. And just put that back. Right? I'm just going to real quick pinch and roll the skin, palpate the ears. Let me know if there's any pain or tenderness. Okay, working from the bottom of the lobe all the way up the pinna. of the helix the tragus here the antitragus all the little bits and pieces on the inside any pain with any of this? no doesn't seem to be any inconsistencies in the cartilage or the skin okay so now we're going to look inside with the otoscope so I have the otoscope here we're going to pop on a new speculum just twist that in like that and we're going to take a little look inside so I am going to be pulling the ear up and back to straighten out the ear canal and very gently 
just inserting the otoscope into the air canal and taking a peek. I'll just ask that you try to remain still. I will be bracing my hand on your face so that I don't poke yet, but just to be on the safe side. Let's start on this side, okay? So, let's pull the ear up and back and insert the otoscope into the ear canal. Good. So, what I'm looking for here is we are looking for any signs of infection, impaction of stearamine on the tympanic membrane. We're looking at the health of the tympanic membrane, the health of the ear canal. Okay, looking at the color, looking at the texture, seeing if there's anything that we need to address. Put your ear back, and we'll do that on the other side. Pull the ear up and back so I can get the otoscope in there. Good. And let's take a peek here. So, the external auditory medius is clear. The color of the skin looks healthy. Panic membrane is the correct color. It's a pearly gray. And the tympanic membrane is intact. No perforation. I can see the cone of light bounce off. And I can see the tip of the malleus just behind it. So I'm just going to pull it and then pull that out. Very good. And that looked pretty good. Now, let me go ahead and grab a new speculum. And while I have the otoscope with me, I'll take a look at your nose. Okay, so this will not be going into your nose, but it does concentrate the light a little bit, makes it easier to see. If you could tip your head back for me, I can take a little look. Okay. Septum's midline, no perforation. The nasal passages are clear and they look to be a nice calm pink color. Okay, very good. You can go ahead and come back down. Now, let's do a little hearing test real quick just to determine if there's anything going on with the ears. So, I'm going to be whispering in one ear or the other. I want you to tell me what word I am saying, okay? Alright, so, just tell me what word I am saying. Board. Table. Okay, what were those words? Good, on the other side. Lampshade. Drawer. Leather. Curtain. Wallpaper. And what were those words? Very good, so hearing is good. So, we've done cranial nerve 7, cranial nerve 5, 3, 4, and 6 was when we did your eyes, and that one we just did was cranial nerve number 8 for your hearing. Okay, so let's take a little look at 
your nose again, but this time I am going to test your breathing. So I am going to cover one side of your nose. I want you to just breathe in and out through the other side, okay? I'm going to cover this side and just breathe normally. Any problems with that? Okay, and I'm going to switch. Just making sure you can breathe through each nostril equally. Sometimes this test doesn't work very well at this time of year. Everyone's got a cold where they're a little congested from the weather. Okay, and any difficulty with that? All right, so now we're going to test cranial nerve number one, and we're going to do a little smell test. So if you could first cover one side of your nose, doesn't matter which one, and I am going to hold up some fragrance, and I want you to tell me what it is, okay? All right, you could tell me what this smells like. That is mint. Go ahead and switch to the other side. And tell me what this smells like. Okay, lemon. Very good. And you don't have to cover either side this time. And let me know what this smells like. Spicy, huh? Yes, it's cinnamon. Very good. So that'll be it for the nose, and then we'll move on to the mouth, the throat, the tongue. We'll check cranial nerves 9 and 10. Okay. Now, if you could open your mouth for me. Okay. Just want to take a little peek here. Okay, and give me just one moment. Get one of my tongue depressors out here. Okay, I'm just going to... Hold the tongue down. Can you say ah for me? Good. It's one cranial nerve down. Okay, and I'm just going to peek around and look at the sides of your mouth here. Okay, and can you lift your tongue to the roof of your mouth? Good. Okay, and if you could... If you could extend your tongue for me out of your mouth, like so. Good, and can you move it up, down, left, this is left for me, right, this is right for me. Good, okay, you can put your tongue back into your mouth. And could you please swallow for me? I'm just going to feel around at the neck here, if you could just swallow. Okay, and any problems with that? No. Okay, and you haven't had any hoarseness in your voice as we've been talking. Okay. Teeth look good, tongue looks good, palate. Okay. Uvula is midline, right? We're going to be checking cranial nerve number 11. That's going to be our last one. So with that, I am going to have you turn your head to one side. Good. And the other. Good. Up. Mm-hmm. Down. Can you tilt to one shoulder? Tilt to the other. This time, can you shrug for me? It's 
give a couple good shrugs. Okay, very good. Let's take a look at your neck. So we had left off with the lymph nodes right under the jaw, and then we come into here into the different cervical nodes. I'll just feel around, feel around there. Okay, good, and then I'm just going to come down to the clavicle here and feel supraclavicular. Very good, okay, and now I'm just going to palpate the trachea a little bit. This might be a little uncomfortable, but I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be very long, okay? Okay, and that is midline. Now I'm going to be just feeling right here, and I'm going to have you swallow for me. Feel if there's any movement of the thyroid. Uh, if you could swallow. Yeah, try swallowing more than once in a short amount of time. It's not very comfortable, huh? Okay, that's all right. Let me just feel the back here. Have you had any problems or pain with your neck? No? Okay. Well, at least nothing out of, <laughs> out of the ordinary, right? Yes, I see. Wait just a moment. And while I am recording my notes here, if you could just recline back on the, on the table. Yep, it's at a bit of an angle there. Just lay back. We'll have you down there for just a second. Okay, and now we're going to look for... JVD or jugular venous distension. So I'm going to have you turn your head to one side for me. Good. And we're going to just sit here for, for a moment. And I'm going to look right in this area. Okay, now I'm going to be pressing on your liver area. This is not going to be very comfortable, but I'm going to look for any hepatojugular reflux, okay? So, I've got my hand right here, and just bear with me for a second. It's going to be quite firm. And press. Yeah, not fun. Okay. All right, I'm quite pleased with that. If you could come back to sitting. Then we will take a little auscultation and palpation of the carotid. Let's do a little palpation. So I'm going to be doing one side at a time. And then I'm also going to be auscultating or listening to your carotid artery. So just bear with me here as I palpate the, the carotid artery here. Okay, good bounding pulse on the other side. Okay, and then let's take a little listen. So I'll be doing one side at a time. All right, so if you could just hold your breath for me. Take a deep breath in and hold. Good, and exhale, the other side, take a 
deep breath and hold and exhale good okay doesn't sound like we have any brewies going on And we will be putting the stethoscope away just for a little bit and we'll move on to your arms and I'm gonna have you hold out your arms for me I am going to be palpating your radial pulses okay I do one at a time and then I'll be doing both bilaterally look for any radio radial delay it's a little quick Was it usually this quick? Uh, yeah, I mean it was quicker on your on your vitals it looks like. So let's calm down a little. Okay, and I'm gonna be feeling both at the same time. Okay, and I'm gonna be feeling your brachial pulse in the crook of your elbow, right? One at a time and then both simultaneously. Good, and then both of them. Doing okay so far? Yeah. We don't have too, too much left. Do the arms, the chest, the abdomen, and the lower extremities. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at your arms. Would you mind just showing me your elbows real quick? Okay, looking for... Relax, skin changes here. Okay, and you can put those down. And I am going to be looking at the arms, maybe doing a little bit of palpation here. Any problems with the muscles in your arms? Pain, weakness? No. Okay, and what about in the joints? The elbow, the shoulder, the wrist? No. Let me look at your hands. Good. Right. The muscles in the palms feel good. Not feeling any wasting. They have good bulk. Okay. I'm going to check the capillary refill on the fingers. So I'm going to be pressing down and releasing on each finger. Good. Okay, let me feel around the wrist here. I'm just going to rotate the hand and the wrist. Good. Nails look good. Let's look at the other hand. Muscle in the palms. Okay. Flip it over. We'll look at capillary refill. Nails look good. Very clear. Not seeing any discoloration or any spotting. They're not overly thin or overly thick. Okay, let me look at the wrist. Okay, let's do a little rotation here. I'm just going to palpate the joints in the fingers real quick. Let me know if there's any pain or tenderness. All right, so if you could just splay your fingers. Good. I can feel each one. All right, that looks good. Now, real quick, I'm gonna have you put your arms up like this so that you're making a 90 degree angle. 
I'm gonna try to pull you towards me. I want you to resist me. Okay, pull. Good, I'm gonna try to push you forward and I want you to resist me. Good, okay. And can you hold your arms out just like this? Good, and I'm gonna put a piece of paper on top. We're gonna look for any tremor in the hands, okay? Okay, very good. And you can put your arms down. And now I'm going to have you stand up for me. All right. And I am going to have you close your eyes and stand in place. I will be surrounding you here so that if you do tip or lose your balance, then I can catch you. Okay. So I want you to put your feet hip width apart. Good, and if you could just close your eyes. Mm -hmm. and just try to stay still. All right, very good. Go ahead and sit down. No problems there. Let's take a look at the chest and then we'll do our auscultation. So, if you had any problems with heart palpitations, a regular heartbeat, beating too quickly, too slowly, anything to do with that, any chest pain. No. Okay, and any shortness of breath, any wheezing, any problems breathing? No. Okay. So let's take a little look here. Yeah, I'm just going to inspect the chest wall here. As we've been sitting here, I've noticed that your breathing has been even and your respiration rate was within normal limits. I haven't heard any wheezing or any So we're going to listen to your heart first. And I want you to just breathe normally for me. Okay. And I'm just going to place the stethoscope on the left side of your chest. Mitral valve. Just breathe normally. Okay, and let's get herbs point right here. Okay, good. So now I'm going to listen to your lungs. We'll be listening for any wheezing crackling, that sort of thing. So I'm going to put the stethoscope on your chest. I want you to take a deep breath in and out, just like that. And we'll go in a ladder motion, okay, down the chest. You could take a deep breath in and out. 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 Last one. Deep breath in. And out. Good. Okay. So 
so I'm gonna take some notes and I'll have you recline back again so that we can take a listen to and feel around your abdomen, all right? Give you just a moment. So let's do our inspection first, and then we'll take a listen, and then we'll do our palpation. So have you had any problems with your digestive system? Any pain at all? No? Okay. So, not seeing anything that I'm concerned about, so we'll take a little listen. Okay, so if you could just breathe normally for me, and I'm going to be listening around the abdomen. Okay, we'll set this bad boy aside for the rest of the exam, and we're going to be doing a little bit of palpation. So I'm going to start with a light pressure, and then we're going to do the deep pressure. So it's going to be a little uncomfortable, kind of like when I pressed on your liver, but it doesn't last too long. Best tip I have is just to keep breathing through it. Okay, so I'm going to start with palpating with one hand and I'd say a medium pressure and we'll just feel around the organs let me know if there's any pain or tenderness that's really important here Anything at all? No? Okay, that's good. A little bit of tenderness there? Okay. <laughs> I was going to be surprised if there was nothing at all. Most people have just a little spot that might be a little tender. Now I'm going to go in with both hands and we're going to be doing that deep pressure, okay? So just remember, breathe through it nice and even. Yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> it is uncomfortable, yeah, but I'd like to overestimate things rather than underestimate. Yeah, uncomfortable, not unbearable. That doesn't last too long. Okay, and that'll do it. So you can go ahead and come back to sitting, and we'll take a look at the lower extremities. So I'm going to take a look at the legs, right? I'm going to look at the color. I'm going to take a good look at the shins. Shins being the forearms of the legs, the knees being the elbows of the legs. Okay. If you had any pain with your legs, are you having any trouble with standing, moving, any knee joint pain? Okay, how are your ankles? Okay, are you dealing with any swelling at all? That's good. That's good. So I'm going to look for some pedal edema here. Just do a little feel. Okay, and I'm going to feel some pulses. So we're going to go behind the knee, the popliteal. Okay. 
good. And then we have the post tib. And then we have the dorsalis pedis. I'm going to look at your toenails, more specifically the capillary refill and the quality of the nails. So I'm going to press down on the nails and release, press, release, press, release, press, release, press, and release. Very good. Got good circulation. The feet are actually pretty warm. That's good. Okay, nail quality is good. All right, and I'm going to try to push your feet down just like this, and I want you to resist me. Good, and I'm going to try to pull them up, and I want you to resist me. Good. I'm going to try to push your shins forward, and I want you to resist me. Okay, and I'm going to try to pull them towards me, and I want you to resist me. Okay, and I'm going to try to push your thighs down, and I want you to resist me. Good, and I'm going to try to pull them upwards, and I want you to resist me. Okay, very good. Give me just a moment. And I think all we have left is just checking your reflexes. So, let me see. Here we go. My little reflex hammer here. Now, with this reflex hammer, this is known as a Traumner hammer. With the Traumner hammer, it's a little different from the one one stereotypically thinks of, the Taylor hammer, where we don't have the metal blade here. We don't have that thin metal blade. So we're not going to be doing Babinski's reflex, but we can do Achilles, knee jerk, biceps, triceps, that sort of thing, okay? So I'm going to start with Achilles first. So if you could just let your foot go floppy there. Okay, and I'm just going to tap, tap, tap. Good, the other foot here. Let it go floppy and I will position it where I need it. Tap, tap. Good. And the knee jerk, so I'll have you let your legs go floppy. Let them relax. Okay? And Good. Okay, let's do the biceps reflex. I'm going to be putting my fingers underneath the elbow and my thumb in the crook of the elbow, and then I'll be tapping on my thumb. We'll do that with this arm here. Thumb at the crook of the elbow. Fingers wrapped around. And the other side, okay, good, and then I'm going to be holding your arm up, and have you make your arm go floppy, and I'll be tapping along the back of the elbow here, so we're going to hold this arm up, okay, and let it go floppy, yep, just let it relax. There you go. And we're going to tap. Good. Put that back. And we're going to just bring this up. Watching the muscle, not the reflex. Okay. Let your arm go floppy. Yeah, this one's a bit tricky with that. Okay. And we'll put it back. Okay, so I think that'll be the end of it, so I can put my little, my little sensation testing tools 
back in the hammer. They tend to make a little bit of noise, so I like to separate them when I'm using them. Then we don't get one of those. Very good. So let me just record that last test. So, do you have any questions for me at all? No? Just if you did well? Well, you did do very well. I didn't find anything out of the ordinary. You are a very healthy individual, and I don't think that there's any cause for further concern. Okay? Very good. So, let me go ahead and sign off here. And we'll put that to the side. All right. Thank you so much for coming to see me to have your head-to-toe assessment done today. I hope you have a whale of a day. And a good rest of your night. Thank you.